But first, let's have another synthesis of where we stand uh, after the past few days. Stephen, uh, really the third day's discussion was all about the management of critical resources. In the Definitely, yes. Uh, <clears throat> before that, let me make a couple of observations. Uh, um, in the open dialogue uh, about uh, privacy and openness and, and cyber security, uh, I, I actually uh, make intervention about, uh, you know, in looking at the complexity of, uh, of, uh, of uh, enforcing and investigating cyber crimes. Um, due to this complexity, I said, uh, the strength of a system is it's as strong or as weak at its weakest point. And out of all this complexity, I was asking, where are the weakest point or where is the weakest point upon which we can focus and upon which we have remedial measure. I did not include it in my uh, synthesis was because there's so many other significant things uh, I want to, to uh, convey to you or remind you of. I think, uh, and I'm, in lack of time, I, I, I think I give myself the courtesy of not including that, but I was so glad that the, uh, the, INCAN, the, the, the ICANN uh, colleague uh, who provided you know, some observation in a personal capacity and for which I thank you. The uh, second observation I want to make uh, before I move on to the third day was um, uh, another intervention reminded me about uh, uh, in the Internet of Things. And uh, um, uh, I remember that uh, in my inaugural lecture as an adjunct professor, I, I did talk about my, my lecture was on privacy and its implication on the Internet of Information, meaning this is where we are now, and then the Internet of Things which do with the RFID, you know, uh, uh, devices hooking up on the internet, emerging, very much emerging thing, and then the internet of people. Um, are you talking about uh, implants and for locating and tracking uh, of people? And it's interesting uh, because it led me to remember that recently the World Futurist Society uh, in this it is annual or this year's uh, prediction of 10 most important or expect predictable technological phenomena uh, within the next 10 years. And among one of those was you and I, everybody in this room, within 10 years will have your own IP address. Not devices, you as a person. Okay, with, with those two observations, let me just move on to... Uh, uh, the, the yesterday, the last day, we had a session on critical internet, uh, critical internet resources. Uh, first theme we're talking about was transition from IPv4 to IPv6. Uh, now, um, I, as I said, uh, this is a personal statement and a personal summary. Um, I understand IPv4 and IPv6 in terms of why it's required and, and all that. It's not my strong suit, and I apologize if I do not give this session justice in my rather short summary. And what I'm sure my colleagues from that session and experts from this room would eloquently and knowledgeably express their views on the relating emerging issues. Uh, suffice, to say that, suffice to say that I gather that there are challenges with coexistence of the two protocol, uh, challenges with regard to mechanisms and standards for coexistence, um, the preservation of investment uh, in IPv4, and the cost to upgrade networks and application services, which for some do not match with the benefits from upgrading to IPv6. In fact, some question what are the benefits of IPv6? But to me and to many, I, I also the depletion of IPv4 addresses really offers a, bin a binary scenario. When it runs out, you need to move on. Uh, and despite of assurance from technical experts, there are still apprehension of possible failures of its technological promises of IPv6. There was also this issue of the black market and legacy space of IPv4 addresses. This is a very con it's a controversial issue, uh, and, uh, and also there's a uh, respect to how big or how small this legacy space are, is, and whether a transfer market should be resisted or should be allowed. Uh, and a very succinct uh, and very uh, relevant observation is that IPv6 is not a technical issue. It's more of a business and a social issue. Uh, so therefore, given the true protocol covering a pressing issue of time and deadline, 
uh, views on emerging issues on how to tackle or minimize such potential problems are definitely welcome in this session. Uh, the second uh, session on, uh, on uh, the uh, managing uh, critical internet resources is to do with uh, global and regional and national arrangement. Um, it's a very, very lively discussion. In fact, it's focused, in fact, al almost focused strictly on, on enhanced cooperation. <coughs> uh, in glo enhanced cooperation in global internet governance uh, as originally proposed in the VISIS Tunis agenda for the information society, which led to the creation of, or one of the major contributing factors led to the creation of IGF. And we had lively discussion. We have a Brazilian uh, a panelist from Brazil uh, who, who, who gave good example of enhanced cooperation from the country, particularly on, uh, on, chi on the protection of ch child in terms of child pho pornography. Good examples are international, like the ITU and UNESCO, and non-government would be ITEF and, and W3C. But he did make an observation about ICANN, though not for profit, is a market-driven and revenue, and there's a lot of revenue for domain names, and the fact that uh, it is sort of uh, perceivably under one government, uh, uh, he, he raised an observation, a concern over that either it should be no government or should for all government. All right, and so uh, and he also mentioned that GAT uh, in, in GAT the Government Advisory Committee uh, within ICANN is an advisory body and underrepresented by developing economies, uh, and so he raised that sort of concern. Um, the the panelists from from, from the U.S. Uh, uh, talk about uh, two drivers, the two major drivers for uh, enhanced cooperation. He noted the very dis, dis this, this even or, or uneven distribution of, of, of mobile uh, uh, connections uh, in, in the different continents. Uh, and uh, so a lot of work needs to be done there. And the second drive is due with innovation. Uh, and and uh, he also gave uh, examples uh, to ITU as a good example for international uh, uh, enhanced cooperation OE, uh, that is on standards and global cybersecurity agenda with regard to uh, telecommunication. And OECD is on the kind of more the economic kind of engine, economic engine for global. Uh, uh, and also he mentioned about IGF as a good example of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, enhanced cooperation. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, representative from, uh, so the, the panelists from Latin America talk about, about the uh, ingredients of enhanced uh, uh, cooperation, the you know, major one would be it, it should embody technical uh, 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 responsibilities. You talk about uh, um, technical, uh, technical policy, talk about public policy as well. It should be a global, globally based uh, policy. Um, in the open dialogue, in the open dialogue, oh, uh, before we enter open, in open dialogue, Emily Taylor, the, the, the eloquent moderator for the, for, for, for that, for, the session in her synthesis of the session on, uh, particularly on open, uh, on 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 the uh, uh, on on the uh, uh, enhanced co-op uh, cooperation, uh, he she, to her there, there was a different flavor of the meaning of enhanced cooperation by the various uh, panelists, 